Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today we're gonna to look at the Ampura Puria 3. Uh, this is a new company to the market, so let's take a look and see if they're any good. So this unit here does 3,600 watts of output. You can also parallel two of these together. You can also get up to 18 expansion battery packs and connect them up for more capacity. This unit here comes with 3,840 watt hours of standby power, and you can buy expansion battery packs to make it larger. You can go up to 7,680 watt hours of standby consumption if you wanna buy the expansion batteries. So this unit does the 3,600 watts. I believe it's uh, 6,000 watts of uh, surge power. In the manual, it states that this unit can do 2,000 watts of solar, although the labeling on the XT60 connection to input the solar only shows 60 volts of open circuit and it shows 20 amps of uh, current that you can put in via solar. So that's only 1200 watts, not the 2000 watts stated here. We can do a wall charging of 1600 watts and we can actually do EV charging of 3000 watts, which we will test on this unit in a minute. So some of the goodies you get if you were to purchase this unit, is we get our AC adapter. Uh, this is for the 1600 watts of charging. And we also get a barrel plug connector. And these are just barrel plug to barrel plug. We also get alligator clips to cigarette socket. And we get an XT60 to a cigarette uh, socket as well. This unit did not come with solar cables. So I had to buy some on Amazon. And these ones here are a little different than even what I'm used to. As you can see, there's like a little piece of metal in the middle there. And I guess that gives it signal to let it know it's coming from PV cables. And then the regular cables here, um, they only have just the regular XT60 clip without the metal. And that tells us that it's coming from automotive. So if you want to be able to high voltage input, you got to have that little clip there to let the unit know that it's PV, not uh, coming from an automotive battery. Uh, we also get the user manual and something else if you want to use the EV charging, you also need to buy an adapter for that. Uh, they supply it on their website, so just make sure if you're planning on doing EV charging that you purchase this little adapter. I think they could have added the adapter and the solar cables in with the unit, but hopefully they do that in the future. So if we take a look at the front of the unit here, we have the name down here and we have an on off button. And you can see the display comes on. Currently we're at 13% because I wanna try the EV charger. This will give you a calculation of runtime depending on what your load is at the current time. It'll give you a reading of how long you can expect to run that specific load. We also have our output and our input and you can see a little Wi-Fi symbol up there. This has Wi-Fi. I will connect this up and show you on my phone. Here on the front, we have our USBs. So we have a USB-A, 24 watts, and that's gonna be for these four. And then we have USB-C, 100 watts, and that's gonna be for these two here. Now to turn this on, you need to push a button on the back side of the unit. And here on the back side of the unit, you can see here, we have the on off button for the DC that's gonna turn this panel on, as well as those USBs I showed you at the front. We have 12 volt, three amp barrel plugs. We also have a cigarette socket, 10 amp, and we have 30 amps at 12 volts, which is really handy to have the 30 amps in case you wanna use this on an RV, you can use it to power your tip-ups in and out. Down here, we have four 20 amp, 120 volt receptacles, as well as we have a TT30 plug. This is gonna be handy for plugging in your RV. This will have no problem running your air conditioner. And we have the power on off button right here on the side for that. And at the other side, you can see we have another panel here. Here we have the solar input and it states 15 to 60 volts, 20 amps max, and we have 12 volt, eight amps, and that's gonna be for solar or car. Here we have an actual physical button to have uh, AC fast charging, so you can actually click fast charging right on the device instead of having to go through the app. And we have our input of 220 volts, 12 amps, and we have an overload protection button as well as down here, we have a battery expansion port. 
And we also have the EV connection port here. And you can see we have lines down here on the side of LED lights. These are changeable on the app. I'll show that in a bit. And they also flash. You can have them come on for a little while, turn off after a certain duration, or just keep them on solid like I have them now. And on the top of the unit, we have 15 watt max wireless charging pads, as well as some more lights. Okay, now taking a look at the app. So we have the device here, we'll click on it. And as you can see, this is giving us a bunch of information. You can see we're at 13%. If we click on the device, it's gonna give us our current state of charge, as well as it's gonna give us a sample of one of the cell voltages. So 3.2 volts, because this is gonna be using 16 cells in series. Uh, to make its connection and it's using lithium iron phosphate as its cell chemistry which is great it's going to last a very long time and we also have the temperature you can change that to fahrenheit if you are in the southern part of north america we have our input we have our output you can turn off different things here um, so i can turn on the ac via the app and there you go it just turned on uh, ambient light so you can see we have it as always on. Uh, you can have it change different colors. Yeah, so you can see there, uh, we have the lights pulsating as well as the ones I showed you on the top are pulsating as well. Uh, we can make them flash. You can also change the color. So we'll go with a red. Yeah, it's not really a red. Let's go red. There you go. So you can change it different colors if you would like. Uh, we can go back to an aqua. And the lights on the top and all that, they all change. Or you can just leave it on solid. There you go, always on solid. That's the way I like them. Let's try that uh, fast charging. So I'm at 13% right now. Okay, so I have a uh, EV charger I plugged in to my EG4. That's from Viver. Uh, I'll leave links in the description below for that company specifically. I haven't realized it, but over the time I'm starting to notice their name brand on a lot of things that I buy. So I bought their charger. I also bought some RV cables. And you can see I bought some 50 amp RV cable. Uh, this is a 1450 and I can't remember what twist lock this is. But I mean, six gauge wire with an eight gauge ground cable. This is really heavy duty stuff. So I'm gonna leave links in the description for this company. Um, they're all over Amazon, they're all over the internet. So check out this company for parts like this if you need them. Okay, so should be able to just plug this three prong side in. and plug in the EV charger. Now in a few seconds, it should start up. Okay, I can hear it starting up. Okay, here we have 3,114. I'm not seeing anything on the app just yet. Let me just refresh this app. Oh yeah, there we go. So AC EV charger, 3,114 watts. Now, I wonder what happens if I hit that fast charging button. Okay, it's decreasing. Okay, we've decreased now. The app hasn't registered it yet. I think because the app has to go through Wi-Fi and then get the signal back. It's a little delayed. Try and refresh this. Ah, there we go. So 1,541 watts. Okay, let's boost this back up. Okay, and there you go. 
3,109. Now you can hear fans running, but that's actually the EG4 fans running. That's not this unit. This unit has the fans running, but they're really quiet. The EG4 is what's uh, making it loud. And we're still not registering on the app. So let's go back, refresh. There you go. I'm not sure if this can just do Bluetooth or if you have to do Wi-Fi. I think you have to do Wi-Fi. Anyways, so I'm gonna let this run and uh, I'm gonna charge this up to full via fast charging and I'll be back once that's done. It says here estimated time one hour and 20 minutes I believe that is so we'll be back then. Okay and the EV charging is done so you can see there we're at 100% state of charge and something else I noticed while looking around on this app if we go to the charge settings so here you can actually set your charge settings uh, how many watts you want going in so 3000 watts in Plus, I believe you can max out the solar, so you can do 4,200 watts of charging, which is really fast. And you can also see here, you can start a timed charge. So you can actually set Sunday through to Saturday, and you can set the time duration. So if you have an off-peak or a peak uh, price range on your electrical bill, then you can actually set this up so you can charge it during off-peak times, and it's a lot more cost-effective. So I think for somebody for the market for this is just going to be somebody who wants standby power in the event of an emergency. I don't really think people are going to be hooking solar up to this. Uh, this would be great for an RV if you don't have the availability of putting PV panels on your roof or something like that. You can use one of these. Let's say uh, the closest town has an EV charger. Well, you can run into town when it's getting low, charge it back up and then bring it back to your campsite. So I think that's pretty neat that it has EV fast charging. So we're all done now. So I'll disconnect the EV charger, disconnect the adapter, and then leave that cap closed. Okay, so let's put some heavy loads on it and uh, we'll see what the discharge is like. Okay, so I'm not gonna run these loads for too long because it's already really hot in here. Let's turn on the AC out and I'm just gonna go off of this display here for the wattage. So let's turn this up full. Okay, we're increasing. Okay, now our load is 1,284 watts. Let's turn on another heater. Okay, we have almost 3,000 watts, 2,742, 43. Let's turn on the heat gun. First setting. Okay, we have 3,661, so this is actually above what it's rated for. It's rated for 3,600. And it's running this no problem. I am going to check the pure sine wave. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. The pure sine wave under load looks good. So that is under load and we're holding at 100 and we have 118.4 volts. So no voltage dip once the load came up. Let's make this thing trip. There we go. So I seen 4,282 watts, I believe that was, and we have cut out now. And the load just came back on. Cool. So the loads just came back on. I didn't have to hit a trip button or anything like that. So it reset itself. Okay, let's turn these off. And you can hear the fan. Very quiet fan and it just went down. Still a little bit of a hum, but the fan has settled down now. Now let's check the charging. So I'm gonna put that on there. Nothing, let's turn on the DC. 
Okay, the wireless charging. So to activate the wireless charging pad, uh, you gotta have the DC on as well. So let's plug some stuff into the USBs here. Just a couple of battery banks here that I need to charge. And this one is charging. And this one is charging, fast charging. So the USBs work, the wireless pad works. We were over 3,600 watts and it held. I don't know how long it would have held for, but it was a good few minutes I had it. And then I uh, did it surge and it ran for a good few seconds before it shut down. So you can do a lot of things with this unit. Like 3,600 watts is a lot of power. Very neat. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more thing with this and then we're gonna wrap up the review. So one thing I haven't touched on yet is the mobility. I think it's right around 100 pounds uh, of weight for this unit. So it is pretty heavy due to the big battery size in here. But we have some great wheels on here. So we have four wheels, we have fixed wheels on the back, and then we have swiveled wheels on the front with brakes. And these are very nice, like, they swivel really well. Um, they have bearings in the wheels. So if you don't lock this down and your ground isn't level, it will take off on you. We also have a handle on here. So this extends out and you can just pick it up like that and do it like a regular suitcase. Or on the back side there, you can unlock it to bring it out more. And then it tilts up. So now you can wheel it on all four and have the handle up here in your hand. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for this review. I think this unit, again, is gonna be great for somebody for standby power. As a standalone solar unit, I don't think this is gonna be for you, but if you need a UPS or some sort of standby power, or if you don't even have solar and you just want to use this to power things and then charge it at home, or take it to an EV power station and charge it up there. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. Bye.